Now it's considered a ghost town overgrown by trees, but it's really empty. Michigan State Police tells us the woman was in her 20s when she walked away from family and never returned. America, we're coming back at you right again. We're, we're coming for you. More small American towns, this time with secrets, unsolved mysteries. Yeah. We're on the case. We're not actually going to solve anything. We're just bringing you the information. But about, maybe uh, you can solve them. And if you do, you know what to do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And we're starting off the list with the town of Holman in Wisconsin. This small village has a story about one of the wildest cryptids in the United States, the man bat. Unfortunately, it's not Batman. This is a large half man, half bat looking creature, far less friendly. Actually, there is a man bat in the actual Batman. It's a bit more like that, the villain, the scary monster guy. So this story goes, then on a September night in 2006, a father and son had a terrifying run-in with what they described as a man bat while driving down Briggs Road at night. Traveling in their truck, the pair spotted a massive figure hurtling towards them in the darkness. The father swerved to try and avoid colliding with the thing, and the creature abruptly changed course, flying up into the sky with a piercing shriek. Now immediately afterward, both men were overcome by this sudden and severe illness, for forcing them to pull over and vomit. Now some say that has something to do with the creature. I don't know, it was maybe emitting something into the air. I just think they saw something really wild and it was overwhelming. I, I'd probably be barfing after seeing something like that. A giant winged creature flying towards my car. I almost just died. They described the creature to authorities saying it was six to seven feet tall with leathery bat-like wings, clawed appendages and glowing yellow eyes. Some speculate that this bat creature could somehow be linked to the infamous Mothman, or that it's potentially even just the same creature. Next up, we've got Saxtown, more like Axtown, a small town located just outside of Milstadt in Illinois. In 1847, the town was comprised of mostly German immigrants, and on March 19th of that same year, one of them, Fritz Stelzeride, was killed. After responding to a knock on the front door of his farmhouse, he was struck down with an axe. The killer then entered the home and killed his father, his mother, his grandfather, and his siblings, all with the same weapon. The bodies were found by Stelzeride's neighbor who got suspicious when he didn't see anyone working on the farm that day. He discovered the disheveled bodies with their throats gouged from end to end. No one knows who the killer was or what their motivation was for ending the lives of an entire family in such a gruesome way. One theory, however, is that the family had been hiding gold on the property, but this was never proved because the existence, or the absence, of the money was never proved. Another theory is that a family member did the killing so that they would become the sole heir to the inheritance. A theory backed by the fact that after the killings, the one remaining member of the family who had not been on the farm that day, as far as we know, fled the country and changed his name. But again, if someone is targeting Stell's rides, it's probably best not to be one. So his logic uh, could come from somewhere else. Moving on to Woodland Park in Teller County, Colorado. Now, we have a very unsettling and tragic case involving a young man named Joshua Maddox. So in 2008, a man named Chuck Murphy was demolishing his old wood cabin when he came across something incredibly disturbing. It was the remains of Joshua Maddox, a young man who had been missing for seven years at that point. He'd been stuck in the chimney. Now, it's pretty obvious that he died in the chimney, but there's always been this mystery as to why he was in there in the first place. Joshua was last seen alive in May of 2008 when he left his family's home to take a walk, but he never returned. Joshua seemed to have vanished without a trace. Then, in 2015, he was found lodged in the chimney of the cabin. This was the last place anyone was expecting to find him, which is why he was found completely by accident. So now people were wondering what happened to him during those years that he was missing. Some think there may have been foul play involved, that someone had forced him into that chimney. Others think he'd just been maybe up on the roof of the cabin for whatever reason and then had an accident. 
Next up we have the mystery of the Below killings which took place in Windsor, North Carolina in 1993, back when the town had a population of just 4,000 people. So small, yes, mysterious, also yes. On June 6, a man armed with various weapons entered the local Below grocery after hours. There were six employees in the building all doing their closing duties when the man arrived and using his handheld projectile weapon, he led them all into the meat cutting room in the back. He bound their hands with duct tape and then stacked the employees two by two before firing his weapons at all six. He then grabbed a meat cleaver and used it to impale the bodies numerous times again and again until the blade actually broke off into one of the victims backs. Super disgusting, but surprisingly after the attack one of the victims was able to break free and call the police. Even more surprising, three of the employees actually survived the attack as well. The surviving employees were able to give a description of the man to police, but neither could figure out who committed the heinous crime, why, and where they are now. But the police did say it was malicious and thought out. There's currently a $30,000 reward for any information that can lead to the arrest of the assailant, so if you know anything, give the Windsor, North Carolina police a call and leave a comment. Next on the list is the Jameson family case. In October of 2009, Bobby Jameson, his wife Sherilyn, and their daughter Madison disappeared from their home in Oklahoma. They were last seen alive on their home surveillance system footage, making trips between their vehicle and their home, packing to leave in what authorities described as this very odd, almost trance-like state. Their abandoned truck was discovered days later in Latimer County, Oklahoma, with their malnourished dog inside and important belongings like their ID cards, their wallets, phones, a GPS system, and a large stack of cash. The family had been considering purchasing a plot of land nearby at the time of their disappearance. But it wasn't until November of 2013 that the skeletal remains of two adults and their daughter were found by hunters in a remote area of Latimer County, less than three miles from where the truck was abandoned. The remains were confirmed to belong to the Jameson family. The exact cause of death couldn't be determined because of how advanced the decomposition was. So the case is still completely unsolved. Next up, we have the mystery of the vanishing Iowa town of Urkhammer. In 1928, the town was small but thriving. It was well kept and growing. The grass was always mowed, the roads were always clean, and ever so often new buildings would pop up as well. Pretty normal town, right? Well, things started to get weird when an aerial photo taken of the town painted an almost opposite picture of what could be seen from the point of view of someone on the ground. The town looked abandoned and disheveled. The grass looked overgrown and unkempt. A weird photo is weird, but many people did their best to believe that the image was the result of a messed up camera lens or something of the sort. But then things got weirder. During a road trip, an American man had stopped to fill up his gas tank in the town, but when he drove away, he realized that his tank had never been filled up, and so he drove back to get the gas that he paid for. He ran out of gas before he could reach the town, but he could see it, and it didn't look far, so he got out of his car and began walking, and walking, and walking. He never made it. No one knows what happened to the town. Some believe it chipped away bit by bit, and others claim that it vanished into thin air out of the blue one afternoon. All right, next we have the case of Jessica Chambers. This one is pretty distressing. So this happened in Cortland, Mississippi. It's still one of the most baffling cases in the state. Just after 8 p.m. on December 6th, 2014, the body of a burning woman was found next to her car, which was also on fire. It was Jessica Chambers. She was still alive and told first responders that a man named Eric, or Derek, had set her on fire. She was rushed to the hospital where she died the following morning from her burns. Now here are the events that led up to her being found. She spent the morning with friends before heading to her mother Lisa's house where she took a nap. Later in the afternoon, she received a text message and left her mother's house, mentioning that she was going to grab something to eat and clean out her car. Around 5.30 p.m., Jessica was spotted at a gas station approximately a mile and a half from where her body would later be discovered. This was the first last confirmed sighting of her alive. Location data from her phone indicated that she'd traveled to nearby Batesville around 6 p.m. She returned to Cortland around 6.30 p.m. At about 6.45, she made a call to her mother, who noted that the call was unusually quiet. 
This was just 15 minutes before Jessica drove to the area where her body was found. At 7.30 p.m., she arrived at the location where, tragically, she lost her life about 30 minutes later. Nobody knew who this Eric or Derek could have been. Everyone, everyone with those names in the surrounding area was questioned, but they were all ruled out. The case is still a complete mystery. Next up, we have the Gurdon Light, which can be found in Gurdon, Arkansas, or Arkansas if you're James. <laughs> He'll never live that down, guys. The light appears floating over the town's railroad tracks. It's eerie, ominous, and it glows a bright bluish white and sometimes has a bit of an orange tint. While the light might sound like some kind of ghost story or urban legend, it's actually not. It's a real phenomenon that occurs on a regular basis and that has been witnessed by hundreds of people, and maybe you if you decide to go visit. But still, Still, no one knows why this light appears. There have been, of course, speculative ghost stories. Some people believe that one day, many, many years ago, a worker was killed on the train tracks and lost his head, and the light is the worker trying to find it again. Others believe he was killed by a co-worker with either a hammer or railroad spike, and some people believe in a much more scientific explanation. Kind of. Underground quartz crystals in the area that are under constant stress cause an electric reaction that results in the glow. Is that true? We don't know. There's not really a lot of scientific evidence to back the scientific theory up. Quotations, of course. The light is always there, but it's only visible at night. Some people believe it to be swamp fog, but that also doesn't make sense. Whole lot of theories for this one, but no real answers. If you have a theory, why not add it to the already very long list down below. Now we move on to Longview, Texas to discuss a mysterious entity that's said to lurk in the Gregg County Historical Museum. This eerie presence lurks on the second floor, where a century-old iron coffin holds a haunting secret. Larry Corrington, a member of the board of directors, has spent a long time volunteering at the museum and, and has experienced some uh, pretty unsettling stuff. According to him, while he works downstairs, he sometimes hears this distinct sound of small footsteps echoing near the coffin upstairs. And he's not the only one who's heard them either. Other volunteers have also reported hearing these phantom footsteps. The origins of the iron coffin date back to the 1880s when it was discovered near downtown Longview. Inside the coffin were the remarkably preserved remains of a young girl. It's believed that she passed away while on vacation and her family, unable to transport her body back home to West Texas, chose to lay her to rest in the iron coffin. Now the girl's remains were reinterred at Greenwood Cemetery, but the coffin itself found its way to the Gregg County Historical Museum in 1980, where it's been ever since. Next up, we've got the Well to Hell, located in the back of an old graveyard in Sabatis, Maine. In 1956, it is said that a local boy had been dared by his friends to descend into the well. The young men were in high spirits, making jokes as their friend began his descent into the well. Well, they lowered him down using a rope, but when he reached the bottom, his friends assumed he would call up or yank the rope to signal that he wished to be lifted back out, but there was nothing. Just silence and no sign of movement. Eventually the friends took initiative and dragged the boy back up from the well, but as he emerged from the darkness, he looked like a completely different person. His hair had gone white, his eyes appeared as though they had lost what was human about them. It was like he had aged and completely changed in a matter of minutes, and not only that, but he had gone mad. He was unable to respond when his friends asked him what happened in the well. After the incident, he was confined to a mental institution and he never spoke another word ever again, but he would occasionally scream in terror. What happened in the well that day, no one knows, no one's been able to figure it out, what goes on down there, uh, but I think a pretty good theory is that it was, in fact, a well to hell. All right, well, there you go, folks. There you uh, have we've it. We've <laughs> solved, uh, well, we haven't solved, but we no. brought you some mysteries that maybe you can solve. Right. Are you one of the assailants in, in, in one of those cases? Please turn yourself in. Yeah. Yeah. Just put the comment down below. We won't tell. We will tell. Um, I've been your host, Sam Thompson. I've been your host, James. Awesome. Catch you next time. Yeah. <laughs>